We were crowned a winner at um, Hitch.com, which is a listing site. That's a huge one. That is a that... really big platform. So I need to frame all of yeah, these. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I'll be careful with my hands. Yeah. And what's interesting and really what's different about Matt Britton is, yes, it's a historic building, and so you get some great photos outside, but it's also a manor house. Most manor houses won't have such formal gardens. And then last night, Charlotte oh. and I actually won the highly commended um, award for um, the historic building wedding oh venue. Oh my gosh! Speaking of weddings and engagements, you just got engaged. I have. Congratulations. I have, only last week. So. That is so exciting. Oh. Welcome to Mapperton, our family home and estate in Dorset in the southwest of England. Julie and I took over running Mapperton a few years ago from my parents, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich. It's a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. This place is full of fascinating stories, extraordinary people, and endless repairs. So please join our family on this journey of a lifetime as we put all our efforts into preserving this magnificent part of England's heritage. I'm just about to enter into the coach house and the coach house is where obviously we have our cafe. Uh, we hold yoga retreats here that I lead. And also this is where we have weddings as well. So I'm just about to meet Kat who runs the weddings here at Mattberton because apparently she has some very, very exciting news to share with me and with all of you as well. Hi Kat. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm gonna, oh, I'll, pull, I'll come over here. So um, this is Kat, everybody, who runs our weddings here and does an incredible job. I hope so. <laughs> well, you must because I hear you have some really exciting news. Yeah. Which um, I can't wait to hear about. Tell me, tell me. Well, yesterday um, we, we won some awards. Uh, one of them I had no clue about and the other one that we, we, we were going to an awards night. We were crowned a winner at um, Hitch.com, which is a listing site. That's a huge one. That is a that really big platform. So very big platform. I'm very happy. Hitch. Wow, so what did we win there? So basically, uh, throughout the past year, we were reviewed by our couples and we got so many reviews that we were just commended um, one of the winners. <gasps> and um, yeah, so we won that. Oh my um, gosh. So I need to frame all of yeah, these. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm, I'll be <laughs> careful with my hands. Yeah, we need to but frame them. But you have them. to frame all of these. Mm -hmm. And where are we going to put these? Do I think we're going to put it out in the bar area. I, mean, I think I'm going to have a wedding shrine, as it were. Yeah, I think that's a really, <laughs> I was about to say, put it out in the bar area. Okay, mm. and this one? So this one, we were nominated as a regional finalist for a wedding venue, a historic building. Um, so that meant that we were going to the finals. And then last night, Charlotte oh. and I actually won the highly commended um, award for um, the historic building wedding oh venue. Oh my gosh! So which is a really big achievement. And the Wedding Industry Awards is quite a well-known thing in the wedding industry right. so um, and were you expecting this one well no? well no we didn't no. know that right. we were going to win it so we had to go up on stage <laughs> oh, and no. everything Did you yeah really? yeah so oh we got that on film it's Who on our socials okay it's on great it's, it's what it's on the on so what's instagram. the instagram i mean i know but why don't you tell everybody what's so the instagram Matt for and weddings so go and visit that but yeah we on our stories you see a little video of us collecting it and yeah it was a really really funny evening winning two awards in one day is not bad is it <laughs> <laughs> no it's not bad and I remember um, getting married here myself. So uh, Luke and I, as you know, got married here uh, t about 20 years ago. And you know what? It was, it was really before we were a, a fully fledged kind of wedding mm. business, if you like. And, um, and it was so magical just to be here you look and lovely. just the <laughs> gardens because you've got the Italianette uh, sunken gardens and you like and what's interesting and really what's different about Mapperton is yes it's a historic building and so you get some great photos outside but it's also a manor house most manor houses won't have such formal gardens 
Um, and that's what makes Mapperton really, really unique that's and special. Selling point, it's a selling it? point, isn't it? Especially like when you get to the edge of it, they don't know what's coming, do they, until they see it, and then they're like kind of taken back by it. So it's, it's a beautiful venue. It's a beautiful venue. And the, most people, well, all of them, they'll have their drinks in, in, the, in like the, the fountain court area or down by the orangery, which is really pretty. Yes, um, but no. exactly. They'll have the reception in here mm -hmm. and dancing in here as well. Yep. And sometimes if it's a bigger wedding, they put a marquee, marquee outside. out. Yeah. 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 So yeah, this kind of transformed like the dancing space. We've got the lovely lights in here. Beautiful. And when they add the fairy lights, that adds a bit of atmosphere to the evening. But yeah. no, it's, it's such a flexible space. And I think that's why a lot of couples go to Mapton because you could have your ceremony down there. You could have your ceremony up here, drinks up here, drinks in the fountain court. It's very flexible. And I yeah. think a lot of couples like that and also it's very quiet so, it is <laughs> so you won't have neighbors <laughs> although i do say the sheep come out during the ceremony and they start making a lot of noise but they like that they like the sheep yeah no no they do you're right that's exactly right and i remember um last year gosh tw 2020 so almost two years ago now uh when we were locked down uh, and we were doing a lot of Mapperton live tours mm -hmm. every Tuesday, Luke said to me, we still have to promote the weddings. Julie, please, will you do a wedding video for me? And um, for Mapperton, I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so Luke and I by ourselves, because nobody could come, no. um, and we filmed this wedding video, really kind of off the cuff, if you like, and Luke edited it together, and it's had like, over 200,000 views. We, whenever a couple inquires, um, that's in our email, the virtual tour of you doing the tour. And every time I have a show round, I say like, did you watch the video? And you're like, oh yeah, we saw Julie walking around. And it was so good to see Mapton on a screen, but then it's totally different when you actually come and visit right. in person. Yeah. Um, so that really helps. Glad I could You've done well, you've done well. Could add to that. <laughs> um, well, that's brilliant, Kat. And then also, now that we're kind of, we hope, we're through Mm -hmm. you know this pandemic period you're getting a lot more viewings in because people yeah. can obviously come out yeah. so what happens when a couple comes here to view it so for example today I've just literally finished with a couple um, who inquired they got engaged in December which a lot of our couples at the moment have done because it's been the engagement season mm -hmm. um, so um, they send it through an email to me I respond back to them and hopefully arrange a show round so I invite them to map them um, and that gives me an idea of like their guest numbers um, what sort of food they're thinking um, and also just kind of like the setting that they're looking for so then I can pick out little things so for example the couple that came in earlier they loved the orangery so I had to make a point like this is our orangery photos in here are beautiful yes. drinks down here are lovely and they want like an intimate ceremony for 10 people only and that's a perfect little setting so perfect so that one and did, do they did they book they have provisionally held well they, done. they did say they're not going to view another venue. Um, so yeah, they, well done, they are just thinking, well, they're just going to go speak to yeah, the yeah, registrars of course, of course. and the caterers and yeah. But what other fun things or interesting things do couples do? Because there's some quite clever. I think uh, I think couples are worried sometimes on a drinks reception because they go off for the photos and they need to entertain their guests quite a lot during that period of time when they're not there. So like we've seen crazy golf on the croquet lawn, obviously croquet on the lawn, um, things like that. And then also because the gardens are so beautiful, we've seen string quartets down there, which is really lovely. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, just we've got such a vast space to have anything crazy going on in the marquees we've had ping pong tables and like <laughs> right. table tennis com competitions um so yeah so. and i know that we put together uh, right before I mean, a lot of this you know was kind of right before the pandemic and mm. we in one sense we got this done literally it was open for its first full season in 2019 and then as we know the pandemic hit and weddings were postponed and but one of the things we also did alongside really the conversion of uh, the coach house was we did we partnered with our local vineyard and local winery Furley who does you know amazing wines. amazing wines and we created with them um tasted it went back for tastings our own what we call montague cuvee so it's mapperton estate it's got the montague lozenges here it's got obviously the earl coronet here and it's montague cuvee and it's english sparkling wine and i read somewhere mm. that the english sparkling wine 
is going to be the new champagne nice. because of the weather. <laughs> because of the weather. So this is apparently, well, and I, it's delicious. This is lovely. A lot of couples have this as like their drinks reception drinks because it's a token like tying in Mapton with their wedding and they, they love the fact that we've got our own little bubbly. So. Yeah, um, but it also, let's just take a moment here. Speaking of weddings and engagements, you just got engaged. I have. Congratulations. I have, only last week. So. That is so exciting. <sighs> um, really, really exciting. Thank you. And were, were you, uh, tell, no, tell us, expected? I, no? No, I, well, yeah. we'd been together for eight years. It was our anniversary. We already had dinner booked and everything. Um, and I was at the dinner like, oh, I'm so tired. I can't wait to get back home and go to bed. <laughs> but he decorated the whole kind of house with flowers, candles, fairy lights, and I wasn't expecting it. I thought the flat was on fire because I could see a flickering in a window and I was like, oh my goodness, it's on fire. <laughs> and then as soon as I got through the door, I was just like, ah, this is it. Oh my gosh, that's so, so exciting. Yeah. Right, so um, not to put pressure, but um, what do, when do you think, no, no, I won't mention Matt, pretend you might be thinking of it and maybe you won't want to get married here to this is the place where you work and I get that, but what year are you thinking of getting married? I think next year. Yeah. We've got to work around the football because my partner is very into football and his dad won't come if it's right. on a football day right. with Chelsea playing. So, Chelsea, I think, so I was about to say, who does he, who does he support <laughs> Chelsea. Chelsea? Right. So I think maybe June is quite a good time to do it because then they'll both be there and they won't be watching football. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, congratulations, Thank you. Kat. Thank you. And um, congratulations on your engagement. Congratulations on these awards, which we definitely have to have framed and congratulations just on you know really coming through this pandemic period and making uh these weddings a huge success um and you know for us to be able to share um this historic building the italianate gardens the you know all the restorations that we've done here in the coach mm. house is wonderful and that's what we luke and i really want to do is be able to share this wonderful remote uh part of England's uh, of England with others as well. So congrats. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, if you're interested in booking a wedding, do check out yeah. my wedding video first <laughs> and then give Kat a call. <laughs> Please help support this important part of England's heritage by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Mapperton Live. I have actually walked past this painting a thousand times. <laughs> so you probably have known this painting. I didn't know until after I filmed at Rockingham Castle for American Viscountess. This has been here for how long? This is a fairly recent oh. picture of Rockingham. And I don't think it even belongs to us. I think it belongs to cousin Anna. But when you who... say recent, like recently painted? Yeah, re recently painted. Well, so the answer to Judy's question is, I've no idea. But You've no um, idea what why. I can say is that that is the worst hung picture I've ever seen <laughs> in Mapperton. I mean, it's disastrously hung. Well, look at it. Look how high it is. So I can tell you what happened. Okay. What? What well, happened? I, okay. Is can you explain? There would have been another picture here mm. that got taken away, and then somebody quite lazy, probably me, Maybe. discovered that we had some other pictures, including this one, which I have to say isn't it's not the greatest picture in the world, and That's used the me. old hook and just stuck it up there because a picture ought to be at eye level. In fact, if you look at the pictures <laughs> in, in the um, entrance hall here, they are all terribly hung. It's all higgledy-piggledy. Anyway, that is Rockingham. Yeah. You've been to Rockingham. I've just filmed at Rockingham. So we just came back um, just a couple of weeks ago, we filmed at Rockingham. And what's, this is what I love about these historic houses. We filmed there for American Viscountess. It was an amazing, I mean, there's several episodes obviously on Rockingham. And then of course I discover the huge Montague, Montague connection. I knew that there was a little one there, but it was actually much bigger than I thought. And then of course, literally two days later, I come back here and I was passing here and I happened to just look up and this, you know, I have passed this a long so, time. So Julie and it's gets the, it's the round really towers. excited. I do. When she comes across something, that has some sort of connection to something that you've been to see. Or, or the, connected the, or to, the, to family. the family in yeah. some way. All these sort of links yeah. and things. But also what well, I really like, can I just say, but what I really like about this is because of there's 
there is an Alberta connection. So I'm doing my dissertation for my master's in country house studies on Alberta, the ninth Countess of Sandwich, who was an American heiress who came over during the Gilded Age and her daughter Faith married uh, Michael Clum Seymour, uh, Seymour who um, had inherited the castle and they lived there. And so now I've got to figure mm -hmm. out if, if Alberta ever came to visit her daughter. It's true, Rockingham feels a little bit like a sister castle to Hinchinbrook. Mm -hmm because they were always close friends. Yeah. And of course, when Faith, who was my great aunt, yes. married Michael, she lived there. Look at my dad. He's right there as well. Yeah. And this picture is terribly hung too, because his eye level is about half a foot too low again. And, and look how on each side, he's just squashed in through the panel. I think he's about my eye level. So how do you do eye level when everybody's different heights? Well, That's we, we, the we've done it for my eye level, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not for mine, because this looks perfect for me. That's true. That's yeah. true. But so I don't you think can it's see, badly you hung. Can see, well, it is badly hung because you can see that these jams are much too close together. So they're, they're crowding the picture. Okay, well, you've anyway, got some reading. Anyway, should we go? I'll tell you what we do have, because these aren't great pictures. We do have a really good portrait of Michael Kamsimo upstairs. Who, husband. who inherited Rockingham up there, and we can go and look at that. And that's by Maggie Hambling, who is one of the country's best portrait artists. Yep, that's true. So down at the end of this corridor is a portrait, or at least it's the study, of a portrait of Michael mm -hmm. Seymour. Yes. I recognize that. Who I remember very well. And Michael was an important person in my life. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. And so, I just filmed at Rockingham and I had no idea. So Mike, Michael was um, what's called a guardian ad litem, which means that when I was growing up, he, were, he had responsibility for representing my interests at Mapperton. So when people were talking about the evolution of the estate and they needed right. somebody to speak up on my behalf it was michael and you can sort of see from this picture that. so so michael there's a there's a picture at rockingham which is the full um portrait of michael done by maggie hambling and this is the study for that and i remember that portrait and it and there's lots of wonderful color in, it's a in, one, in, in i know i saw scalp, it it's but there? it's wonderful because i remember seeing that at witherston Yes. But, it, but she's really caught something there. There was always something very kindly about, about Michael, and he was always looking out for other people. But there was always also something rather mischievous. Yeah, and you, you can, can see, see that. a slightly mischievous glint in his eye. Anyway, he, yeah. he was an absolutely wonderful person. And of course, we also have two other pictures by Maggie Hambling here, which are also studies of my parents. Yes. So my mum and my dad are here as well. But we're missing portraits of. You and me? Yes. Maybe yeah. it's time. What do we think? Well, right. I've been saying that for, you know, a long, quite a while because people keep asking me, when are you getting, when your, are you getting portrait? your portrait out? Right. I mean, I had, then... I, there's my portrait through there, which was done by my grandmother, probably when I was only about 20 or something. Hmm. So I haven't yeah. had one done for a long time. Should we get one done together or do we get one done separately? I think I'd like to do, I mean, not, listen, I, I, but I think we do wait, one. Wait, wait, wait. I think I know what she's going to say. I no, am gonna, basically, she's going to no, say separate. I'm going to say separately at first, and then I think later then on we could do Eventually, one. when we're closer, we can have one together. <laughs> no, Is but, that right? Well, I, this will never happen. You keep telling me it's going to happen. Well, it will never I think, happen. I think it'll happen. Okay, okay. Yeah. Why do you think okay. so? Well, I don't know. I've just got a okay. feeling. <laughs> sure, I've heard that before. <laughs> So the day is drawing to a close. Mm. It's been a good one. Yeah. Do you think? Every day is a great day. Every day is a great day with Julie. <laughs> Every day is a great Isn't day. Yeah. Every day is a great day. What's, no, the, other, what's but, the other saying you have? No, you have two choices in life. My saying with all my kids since they were, well, growing up is you have two choices in life. You can have a good day or you can have a good day. What's it going to be? Basically, no choice. That's right. It's no choice. It's got to be a good day. got to be a good day. So, so today's yeah. been a good day. day. Yeah. But at the end of every day at Mapperton, we have to close our curtains. work is not done. But wait a minute. Before we, before we talk about that, we should actually admit that we do not close the curtains every night at Mapperton. No. We're very lucky that we have Beryl, who is the housekeeper here. And one of her jobs in the morning and in the evening at dusk 
is to go around and mm. do all the curtains. And we want to salute Beryl for yes. doing this for years because there are quite a lot of curtains here to do. Mm -hmm. So tonight we thought we would save her the trouble. Well, we do it. Do, well, we do do it sometimes. As well. yeah. I've done a video before on um, way back when on my channel, American Viscountess, and it it was about sort of the different rooms in the house, and I was closing the curtains, and so many people have asked, why do we have to open and close the curtains? every single day like you, do you want, me, you want me to answer that yes i am going to have you answer that question i mean i know because, the answer but because that's a civilized thing to do what's the point of a curtain <laughs> if it's not open during the day and closed <laughs> at night it's just one of those things that you do but i think it was if we're not using the rooms and why wouldn't you do a, that yeah well rooms need to breathe they need light they need to have the warmth of the sun yep i think they're like people yes exactly anyway, Anyway, so that was... I've just realized Beryl might be coming around any second to do the curtains. Oh. If we don't get going quickly, she's going to do it. Did you not tell her that we so were going to do it tonight? The thing okay. about curtains at Mapperton is some of them work and some of them don't. Mm -hmm. And the ones that don't work, you have to really give a stiff mm -hmm. pull. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually, we've got quite a lot of curtain restoration to do because the curtains in this room, Quite example, a lot. I mean, that's the understatement of the year. Completely falling apart. Look, Look at, at this. That. Oh my goodness. Now these are from Hinchingbrook, is that right? Do I we think, think these may have come from Hinchingbrook. They're silk and they, they, yeah, you, can they're see, silk. you can see how they've been repaired. repaired. But repaired. I think they are now past repair. You think and the no? Re yeah, they are. The, re no. the reason that curtains like this start to fall apart is... Sunlight. Sunlight, exactly. So all of the sun's rays uh, causing oh, no. the fabric to deteriorate, but we will we will find. Do you think that these were shortened as well? Somebody cut them. Probably, yeah. Oh. Everything's been chopped around and changed here. Anyway, okay, yeah. Let, let's get We'd going. like to I'll restore some of the curtains, but the one, especially the ones that came from Hinchingbrook. So, don't listen to him. I would like to have these, you know, restored. I think there we, we go. First curtain done. Yeah. One down. There we How go. How many to go? Okay. Quite a lot. Okay, you do the next one. I think it's worth actually pointing out that some of these curtains have really rather, rather nice brass mm. knobs Look at this to hold one. them down. Okay. Now in here, we've got a really high set of curtains. I don't know if you can see, but these ones, not everywhere has curtains because some places we've got shutters. Shutters, but how do you close that top one? I've always wanted... What? I never wait, knew wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. Judy's I never knew that. Here I never knew that. Doesn't I know how. No, do you know what? Every time that. I saw that, I didn't close it because I didn't think that there was a, a pull there. And then in the hall. You mean in the library? Sorry, the library. We've got. Or there were once curtains here. We've got missing curtains. You could see that. They're missing. So all we've got are shutters. Shutters. Nice curtains. Those ones are nice. You can yeah, probably fast forward these. Curtains in here. Sure is. Probably need a little bit of repair on the thing is, These have been so bleached by the sun, Luke. Yeah? Yeah. These, you know, look at the, look at this. This is bleached. Like this is white now. Yeah. So How long have those been here? That's been around like that and the sun has just, well, yeah. it's been here for years, decades. Right, there's a few more curtains in here, and these ones I know are funny lengths because they don't go all the way to the bottom. Why is that? It's just mm. because. This one goes very, very slowly. You've missed the bathroom. Okay, it's, it is 
actually quite tiring to I'm me. actually really tired. All the curtains are out and we still haven't finished. In fact, there are still curtains but... to do in our bedroom. There's yep. curtains to do in, in our the back, back sitting, sitting room. room. We've got curtains to do in the laundry room. We've got curtains still to do in our spare room right next to us. I mean, there's just endless curtains, but <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. nearly there. It's but look important. at this curtain. This curtain is a disaster. It's it really is. It's, it, this Aren't is, these relatively this, new? This is, a, this is the relatively most... Relatively speaking. Yeah, they are. They are. The definition but it, of new But the problem Appleton. is that when they were put in, they may have used the old runners. And they're, they're heavy curtains. And I think the runners have just... Look at them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> look at that. Look, at it's just completely... That's, that is the kind of leaning tower of curtain, isn't it? Oh, dear. It's, it's really just a disaster. It really um, is. Yeah. Because these are... I mean, how many years old are these? Uh, these, these are only 10 years old. But right. these ones here do not have a pull. So you've got to just oh. yank them. Oh. And then there's even more curtains around the side here. In fact, we've got three more sets. So come on, come on, we haven't okay, finished. Okay, yeah, come I just on, thought I on. heard something. Let's get it done. Okay, you, you go over there. This, I think, is going right. to be our final curtain for now. Ugh. Oh, oh. oh. Uh oh, oh dear. This doesn't sound good, does it? What is that? Oh dear, it's gone. It's just, what? It's no. just gone. What? Yeah. So Beryl has already told me about this one and someone very kindly is going to come and help us. What about in the Muniman room? Is there one We've in there? There's more in the Muniman room. But I, I think you know that what? there I'm, is. I'm curtained out. I've, I've, Wait, I'm, just... I'm over curtained. What? Oh God! <laughs> that was nearly the end of Julie, the curtains. That could be it. Well, I mean, it's not, but I mean, it's it for this bit. Do you know what I, when sometimes <laughs> when I think about Matton, I think of a button that you could press and every curtain has a little motor and a, they call a servo, I think. And you press the button, mm -hmm. bzz, they open and sure bzz, they close. Sure somebody has. Do you know what? Really Comment smart down below. homes in America probably have curtain Comment closers. Comment down below if you know about do you think, that. Do you think we should get those from Matton? What that technology or, is. Or would Let that slightly know. spoil the aesthetic here? No. Let I us know, please. Might make life easier.